This is Dr. Alex Moulton. Alex Moulton, yes. And we're in Bradford on Avon on the 3rd of June, yes. 2010. Well, thank you so much for inviting us down here, <laughs> Alex. I'd like to ask you, um, I mean, there's so much going on yes. here with the bicycles right. and, and the other projects, but yes. I'd like to ask you particularly how you first got involved in making rubber suspension for cars. I started with, with rubber suspension for, for a pram. Aha. Uh -huh. Literally a pram, um, a little tiny thing. Then I thought, well, uh, a child doesn't really mind being bumped a bit, uh, but human beings do. So then, yes. then, then I did it on, on a trolley where goods might be knocked about. And then uh, all the time I was having the important invention of rubber in, in torsion shear, which if you imagine there's a shaft there, if you yes. imagine there's an arm here, and with my muscle, which was now very emaciated, were rubber. It's so that. Yes, so it's torsion. It's a of it, in torsion. It's rubber in torsion. Yes. So that, I did that invention in about um, very early 50s, 1950s. Yes. And uh, soon went on, on to, the, the first thing was on, actually on a motorcycle, the suspension of Vincent Comet, and then thereafter, uh, cars. So um, then I'm trying to bring it back into the Bristol scene. Um, Jack Channer. Yes. He um, was an extremely able engineer who was responsible for a great deal of this brilliant thing, which, which the, the Bristol is, and particular structure. And uh, he used to come over here to talk to me. And he knew about my, my fixed doors, he called it torsion sort of uh, spring. And uh, I said, what about doing one for, for, our, for, for the car? So um, he, um, he and I designed uh, and made, got made a uh, flex door for the front suspension so the top and bottom arm, um, which were uh, all proper anti dive or diving forward, and in, on the rear, a, a, a semi trailing thing with skew. And it was extremely successful. It, it rode marvelously. Was the rear suspension rubber based as well? Oh, absolutely. Right, so that all was in, uh, again in. Um, Torsor, flex in, in, yes. always flex doors. And so the, you've used the term flexitor from then until yes. now because yes. your current bicycle yes, indeed, has flexitor suspension yes. on the same principle. Yes. It's called branding. Right. Um, I think you, you you mentioned doing a Vincent. Yes. Um, Vincent you've Comet. tried out one or two other. Yes, a Royal projects. Enfield. There was a Royal Enfield. Yes. yes. Um, Made here at Bradford. Right. I believe. Am I right in saying you tried a Morris Minor with all rubber suspension? Oh, no, that's very important. But um, no, so yes. Um, it was a different form of spring that it was applying it to, 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 to uh, a Morris Minor, which is Egonis, who I was enormously fortunate to, to work for, but a great friend of mine. He said rubber is not an engineering material. So yes. I said, well, you know, it is used in a pneumatic tar. Small matter, yes. And you know, he's very sincere about it. So um, when he went off to Elvis, um, where we did together the, the hydrolastic, he made the hydrolastic. But, uh, we did some experiments at, at uh, uh, Morris uh, with a Morris miner converted to rubber suspension and it went through the, the Mara, which is a very bumpy road. The test track, it. yes. Test track. It went through that a thousand miles, no, no car with all this. We've never done that without, without breaking down. Because it's completely, it's a test of destruction. Absolutely Mara. so. Yes. And it won absolutely like that. So yes. he, he goes completely accepted the whole idea yes. of rubber suspension. Yes, yes. You've made, us, you've made one or two specials before, though, I think. Um, no, um, don't get confused with what Izzy Gurnis did um, with, with his pre-war lightweight special, that marvellous yes. thing. Yes. The lightweight special. That had rubber bands, but not quite what I was doing. But, uh, and and I, was that an inspiration for you, the lightweight special? In no way. Ah. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I admired it. Yes. I admired it enormously because of the exquisite workmanship, but absolutely not the way uh, that I would want to do it. It's too complicated. It belongs, believe it or not, to my next door neighbour. Oh, is it Well, his saved? brother, Ian Chain. It is saved, yes. Oh, thank heavens. It was a lovely yes. thing. It's, sometimes it's in the Motor Museum. Yes. And uh, But he was at, um, uh, I think he's at Prescott in it this year. Oh, good, yes. So it still comes out for outings. So and, uh, as you say, it's exquisitely Excellent. designed mono it's monocoque. And it's all made by hand, yes. by basically his own hands. Yes. With, with old George Dyson, who was his friend at the time. Yes, yes. Um, so it's a wonderful uh, um, uh, icon of the, the, the brilliant man as he goes. Then, but then you tried a, a butterfly, is that the right word? Rotor clamp? Um, um, I'm so sorry, the dragonfly. Oh no, no the dragonfly, no. 
<laughs> he, and, he and Duncan, uh, he was one of the young people at uh, Austin. Um, yes. And he um, uh, wanted to get the Lord um, to be interested in uh, other cars. And so he made a thing called the Dragonfly, which needed to say it had our rubber suspension on. Yes. Well, that was a compression spring at the time. It was called a Dragonfly, yes. But, uh, but those were those were just um, side, wind, side, yes. Side, yes. Side, yes. side projects. Yes. Um, the, the, the main thing, of course, the rubber cone spring uh, on the uh, the Mini, of course, it hadn't got the hydroelastic one uh, ready for the interconnected hydroelastic ready in time. So we put the cone spring on. We've now been on on uh, five million cars. Five five million. Five million. Yes. My word. You, I mean, I mean. you tried an Elvis, I think, as well at that yes, time. Yes, that was very right? important. The Elvis, uh, that was the experiment. When is he going? He left uh, Morris. He went to Elvis um, mm. because he was frightened of the, the, the landlord who put uh, the boss man at British Motor Corporation. He was frightened that he would be pushed aside technically. So um, he was with John Parks the, at, at Elvis doing the uh, uh, new Silver Lady, actually, if I do that. Yes. As we, um, at that time, is he going to having been allowed the, the idea of the, the uh, rubber being worthy of material? Um, we, we were again in the late 50s. We were tremendously admiring Citroen. And the Citroen um, was, uh, had the dirt of the, 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 the um, DS was very complicated, high pressure system. But the, the dirt of the, uh, the picture here in front of the house, I bought a dirt of the, um, which was interconnected. Yes. And as I said, why don't we do it hydraulically? That was mm. the birth of hydroelastic. Mm. So that happened at Elvis. We had a car running at Elvis, and that, that uh, when he when, uh, uh, was brought back to, to, to uh, uh, Longbridge by then Lord, um, that was the, the, the birth of the thing. We, we had the birth of the Mini and so on. And we had the, uh, but I hadn't got the hydroelastic ready by then in small size. So we put the cones on. Right. And then right. thereafter, the hydroelastic and then hydrogas went on across uh, these 12 million cars or something of sort. So. so we started from the Mini through the 1100, through the, uh, after the MG, 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 um, MGF. MGF, the yes, last one. yes, yes. And that one there, that was the, 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 the Citroen. The, road, yes. the uh, uh, Metro, Rover Hunter. Rover Metro, yes. Yeah. So, so um, when the Bristol 220 was developed, yes. um, and, and it unfortunately didn't go any, didn't no, go any further, no. but it, it got to a, um, a test car was yes, made. And yes. did you drive that test car? Very much so, yes. Yes. What was it like? Wonderful. Yes. Handled beautifully. A very good ride. Yes. And we had rubber mounted on the engine too, so that was quite good too. I think, and uh, were you were you responsible for the rubber mountings as well? I'm sure we were. Yes, yes. we made them all. And I, am I right? Quite simple, sure, am I right in saying that the Bristol 401, the one with the 403, 401, with the very broad front cast aluminium bumper uh, section, was that mounted on rubber as well? I don't know. I, well, it's, it's, I don't know. Uh, right, right. It may. I, it's. I've been told that you, yes. your, your company may have uh, had, Might a hand have, but I don't know. had a hand in that. Look, I'm sure if it, was, if it was rubber bonding, yes. then it would be made by our firm, Spence Motors here. Yes. Because we pioneered that, all that system. We introduced rubber in the rubber industry uh, 150 years ago. The old wool mills. And, and did the Bristol 220, did you drive it here or did it come here? or? Yeah, it was always there. It was yes. here, absolutely. Yes, yes. Um, so if things had turned out differently, um, all Bristols would have would have had rubber suspension after that. I wonder. Quite possibly hydraulic. I wonder. And they would have. Uh, yes. They would have I been wonder. ahead of the world. <laughs> remember, remember this thing that um, um, mankind most stupidly uh, likes to be bumped about. You see, it, it comes from this. If you look in the in the uh, Formula One uh, thing, well, what do you see? You see the man's head moving like this. Yes. Like that. Like yes. that, like that, like that. And uh, that's what the kids want. They say, I want to bump about. Yes. I'm not interested in comfort. What do you mean by comfort? Uh, uh, I, I, uh, comfort. Uh, go, uh, go clubbing for comfort, you like. But for driving. Uh, woo, woo, woo. So, of course, so the whole the idiotic motor industry in the world, they have simply said, uh, be, don't bother with ride comfort, simply bother with, with, with handling. 
an, an example of comfort is American Airstream caravans, which have rub, which also have a rubber suspension. Does Could that rubber. relate to your to they your would patent? Indeed, sir. Yes. They would yes. Do. Uh, that one less than you can see. It's called a, hen, a Hensham axle, I think. Yes, I don't know. That's a very like comfort. Same background. We all share the same background, rather. Um, and I think the Flexitor was used on the Austin Gypsy. Oh, very much so. Yes. So that is still down there. But Ro of course. Roy Fedden, who yes. you worked with quite closely. Very much so. Did you have a hand in his EX1 project, the, the three-cylinder radial-engined car? Uh, the answer, yes. It was a disaster of the first order. Right. What happened? It, it did everything wrong. We were, we, we were uh, mesmerised by the Volkswagen. Yes. And it was air-cooled. Obviously, the three-cylinder air-cooled was the right way of doing it. Radial. Uh, and it uh, had uh, swing axles. Everything bad. Yes. Uh, by the time uh, an automatic gearbox was, was put into it, it was enormously high. Yes. So it was appalling with error in every way. So very high, very high centre of gravity uh, at the rear. Swing axle, you can't imagine any more awful. Yes. And it was involved in action and everything. So, so uh, um, the answer to what I can either with, yes. Uh, do I regret? Uh, I regret having hurt the man, but he got all right in the end. But uh, it was an enormously wrong thing to do. The right thing to do was to follow the, the footstep as he goes. I'll also observe that you obviously saw potential in the Volkswagen. Yes. At a time that other people were dismissing it as a yes. as an un, you yes. know, the rest of the British motor industry dismissed it. Didn't it they? Did, out of exactly. hand. Oh, this is no good. This will never exactly. sell. Yes. We saw the need, sir. And you realised. That was very fed and very much the same. Yes. What was it about the Volkswagen that attracted him? Do you think? It was an extremely simple construction. Yes. Yes. And the fact that I think five million or eight million had been made by then. Yes. Yes. And the Germans were there. Being German is well made. So, but the, but the, the EX1 went, went nowhere, unfortunately. Um, uh, you've talked 20 years ago, uh, nearly 20 years ago, I, saw, I read an interview that you'd done about in the, in the early 90s, yes. and you talked about the importance of Homo Faber. Yes, the man who absolutely makes Absolutely so. Yes. A tremendous, I cried out loud that we, as a nation, we must get back to making things. And you said at the time, mm. and I, I think yes. I can quote, yes. that um, it was the bankers Mm. We'd, we would stop making things yes. and we were turning into a nation of bankers. Yes, sir. No yes. good was come of, would come of that. Exactly, because they were manipulating money. And you were a voice it. crying yes. in the wilderness at the time. Yes. But look yes. look how right yes. you've turned yes. that we to we be now. We back and in, encourage the youngster to make things with their hand. Yes. Uh, for the health and safety, it doesn't matter if you cut yourself, put a bandage around it. Yes, it's a learn, you, yes. you learn yes. about cutting yourself a few times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, how important was apprenticeship to you? Really, I went, I did a um, I realised when I was making the steam car, another boy running about here, that um, I didn't know the um, hand skills. So what I did was, uh, after Marlborough, before going to Cambridge, I did my mechanical science in Cambridge, um, I went to Central Wagon to do a premium apprenticeship, yes. which is a very, very valuable thing. It was that the parent uh, paid the company um, for his son, whatever it is, to be apprenticed. And we, we, we operated with the the, the ordinary works we played completely. We played football, we played everything, we had games, we had absolutely. Yes. But we were pulled aside uh, to have some time in the drawing office. Right. And in uh, the various test shops and things where the other apprentices didn't. So it was a socially an enormously valuable thing. Right, right. Which I very much advocate. So it's given you a breadth, a breadth of experience exactly so. at, at, at and, the, of the industry at several levels. Exactly so. And design the, to the manufacturing. And the, the input from the work, the, the shop floor, the input is always marvellous. Yes. So never overlook what the garden shop, shop floor says. All the damn thing is real, reality. I mean, we don't own know, know the laws of nature. Mm. Uh, so they can be really hostile, by the way, the laws of nature. <laughs> Where did British industry run into trouble? We, had, we had apprentices, but yes. we um, had engineering. But what went wrong? I would think really the, um, um, I attribute the, the, the 60s, you see, were an amazing period. Yes. Now, we had, um, we'd won the war, or at least we'd been in the war from the beginning to the end, and, and we'd beaten the Germans. And um, we were extremely arrogant, we felt we could do anything. But, 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 the communists thought they could also, so the, the destruction of the strikes in industry was, do you know we had to think one year, 500 strikes from the, the cars? Yes. 500 strikes, so the Red Robber. 
Yes. So it was communist inspired and communist led. So that's where it all went wrong. Yes. Like yes. in the, the latter 1960s, then the government did, did the nationalising and so on. Mm. And whether do you think there were class divisions inside the inside the factories, inside the manufacturing works between um, the apprentices and the engineers and the management? Is that part of the British no, part feature of the British system? No, I think I think that's now um, not, not at all. Yes. Um, there was also a proper relationship between the the the, uh, the 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 salary of the workshop, the workshop, and, and the salary of the boss man. But right. quite reasonable levels. Yes. I mean, they were uh, five to one or something. Yes. Um, four or five to one. But now, I mean, it's obscene when you think of these terrible people getting a hundred times. Yes. It's appalling. So yes. that, yeah. that's where the, 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 the rot has gone that's wrong. Where, that's where, and that's where the they division. manipulated the money, it's all they're doing. Yes. And they, yes. They, uh, Look, they, they think a computer could, uh, could, could indicate how to make money. It's a rubbish because the human being decides where he wants to make money. Mm. So the, the first thing they do, he's got to do is to stop being simply taking every decision on how can I, uh, by greed, how can I put money in my own pocket. It's the last thing you should think of. You need probably wage, but, but to simply, uh, it's absolutely right. To collect these beautiful cars, which in the end, in the end, will be, will be worth a great deal of money. Okay. Who were your role models as an engineer? Oh, uh, Fedden. Fedden. Fed and Nigel Gresley, the, the, the London North East. And, um, but Fedden really went up there. What was special about Fedden when oh, you worked with him? He was a wonderful uh, a leader and uh, uh, extremely, absolutely honest as can be on everything. Um, People talk a lot about the, the characteristics of leadership now. Yes. Um, what, what did, in what way was he a good leader? He gave good instructions. Yes. <laughs> but, but he, knows, he, knows, he knew what he was doing. Yes, so, so he was competent himself. Absolutely. So he was respected himself. Exactly so. But then people would then obey his exactly instructions so, yes, exactly. because they, yes. they value yes. what yes. he was doing. Yes. So, okay. so today's leaders have to know what they're doing. Absolutely. They don't. No, no, on the contrary, on the political side, I think that what we've got now is a brilliant thing. We've got enough of it, but we know it, but we've got a government. By, by uh, David Cameron, it, it shook hands with the Queen, got the thing established. Uh, wonderful. Right. Uh, we've got a hope now. Yes. Yes. So in fact, you're doing getting the government going at that time. It's a wonderful. It's simply supportive, like anything. That. Uh, the, well, we re we realise we're at a time of crisis. Absolutely. So he does. Yes. Yes. So I think I've got hope in that way. Yes. Yes, we're going to rise to the... Absolutely so, because I hope we'll be moved by shame and that we know we've got this, this uh, uh, terrible burden, uh, which has been our folly, due to our folly. We've got to get on and put it right. One of which, one of which is making things. One of which. We've got to get back to making things. Yes. Yes. And providing good service. Yes. Like your medical service, very good. I have been well treated. <laughs> we very much hope so. Yes. Um, how do you make flexi tours? Are they, is it, do you Bonding. use low, low temperature bon, uh, no, for no, freezing? It's, or like it's a rubber molding which you, you uh, extrude rubber and uh, um, then put it into a mold and then heat it. Right, right. And, then, and of course that can be made on a tiny scale yeah, or a bicycle or a big scale for, a, exactly. big scale for, yeah, a, for a, a car axle. When you made the Moulton bicycles, yes. you, you, you realised you could make a more efficient, yes. a better bicycle. Yes. Um, key feature being small wheels. Yes. And then you needed high pressure tyres yeah, for efficiency. Exactly, and, and suspension. Did yeah. the suspension follow on from no, the wheels? Or did the, did the, 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 the All fundamental. If you have high pressure tyres yes. and small wheels, you must have suspension. And then having suspension gives you an advantage. Yes, yes. yes. Um, thank you very much. Thank so, you very much.